Hello and welcome to MedEvidence Articles, where we encourage community research and education with weekly articles. I'm your host, Benton Loeyball, and this week we're talking about how intermittent fasting may improve indicators of heart disease. Does intermittent fasting really work, or is it just about eating less? One of the major solutions to nearly every medical problem includes a good diet. A good diet generally includes foods that are less processed and also lots of plants, but specifics vary. One thing that doesn't vary is the amount. One of the hardest things to cope with in today's society is just eating less. A big problem for many people, including me who is currently sitting behind a Costco amount of ice cream, is eating at night. One increasingly popular method of controlling overconsumption is called intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting sounds like you would periodically go a few days without eating, but it's much simpler and easier than that. In fact, we all intermittently fast every night when we sleep. Fasting in general is very widespread and practiced by most animals, usually when they sleep. While animals fast, studies have shown increased brain performance, reduced inflammation, reinforced day and night schedules, and changes in which fuels are found throughout the body. When we really boil it down, time is divided between feed time and fast time. Intermittent fasting extends rest time by narrowing the window we eat in, usually to around 8 to 14 hours per day. There have been several studies on intermittent fasting, but most have few participants and are usually only a few days or weeks long. Despite these limitations, most agree that a fasting period of 12 hours is sufficient to see changes for most people, but 16 hours is so long between meals that many people will cave in for an extra meal, or two, or three. Additionally, many experiments have found evidence of improvements in body weight, blood pressure, metabolic and inflammatory markers, sugar metabolism, epigenetic changes, and appetite. But how could changing your eating time affect all of these systems? Early studies in rodents showed that mice and rats who intermittently fasted used more energy than those with normal eating times. This was unexpected, but made scientists investigate if there was some mechanism to intermittent fasting that caused extra energy to be used. An intensive clinical trial in humans was performed that tracked the precise number of calories and energy use. This found no difference in energy use between people who intermittently fasted and those who didn't, and revealed that the difference may have been that rodents spent extra energy searching for food during the previous experiments. This difference between people and mice highlights the critical need for rigorous clinical research to translate hypotheses into evidence-based conclusions. The next place to look for how intermittent fasting might be causing changes was in how much food is eaten. In early October 2024, a new study was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. This randomized, controlled trial followed over 100 people for three months to determine longer-term effects of intermittent fasting. Half of the patients restricted their eating window for four fewer hours than normal, and the results were revealing. Measures of glucose control, blood pressure, and inflammation all improved. In addition, the fasting group lost around 6.5 pounds during the study, compared with fewer than 3 in the control group. One of the key differences between the groups, however, was caloric intake. The intermittent fasting group ate an average of 350 calories fewer than the control. That's about the same as a normal breakfast, consisting of oatmeal or cereal with some fruit. This reduction in caloric intake might be the major driver of many health benefits seen in previous studies. Though intermittent fasting has obvious benefits, it is not a miracle cure. Many of the studies in the literature have short time spans and few patients. The study referenced above, in fact, explicitly states that one of the major limitations is a short time span. Anyone who's ever dieted knows that bodies adjust and most of the changes occur early on before plateauing or even regressing. We still don't know if the effects of intermittent fasting would plateau like in other diets. Additionally, food is a social activity. Most of us don't eat every meal alone, except when writing this article on a tight deadline, but instead eat with friends or loved ones. For this reason, intermittent fasting and any changes to food habits might be best done with someone else 
who's dragged along kicking and screaming. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Met Evidence Articles. If you'd like to know more, all of our descriptions are linked in the podcast description below. You can also visit our website at medevidence.com. Met Evidence helps answer the question of who can you trust for medical information? The Met Evidence platform provides valuable information about many medical issues and the insights of evidence based medicine. Met Evidence educates audiences through engaging and entertaining magazines, podcasts, videos, articles, and presentations. We strive to bring together diverse voices of top-level medical professionals, researchers, and experts to provide unique and engaging content that uncovers the truth behind the data. For more great content, including discussions by physicians and subject matter experts, check out the MedEvidence podcast. My name is Benton, and we'll see you next week.